giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem Rakakwadash, Shalom to the Lord's elect, which begins with the 144,000. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem Rakakwadash. And I'm, I'm not sure of the exact title I'm going to put on this video, but um, I was reading the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. This has to do with the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And uh, this is, if you're a spiritual man or, or a spiritual woman, um, you'll clearly understand that indeed we do have the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, and it was revealed to us by the Holy Spirit, beginning with our elders, you know, King Marsha, Elder High Priest Arya, Elder High Priest Yaikwa, uh, Brother Shah. <clears throat> Those were the elders of 1 West 125th Street. Now, when I came in in the summer of 1990, um, that's when I learned the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. I, that's when I learned that the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. And his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai. And we say those names with great reverence and with great respect. And we believe by faith because this thing of ours is based upon faith anyway. Um, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And what is faith? As a matter of fact, let's go to the definition of faith. For those of you that don't know. Uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is the definition of faith according to the Bible. Uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first verse. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So that's the very definition of faith. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. So I particularly learned that name by faith. And to this very day, I still believe that the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai. Now, you have certain Israelites that have deviated from the faith, and they're telling you, in particular, Bishop Nathaniel, got to mention him, they're telling you that we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, which doesn't make any sense, especially when you read the scripture here. And that's what inspired me to do this video. Once again, I hope, I hope it's edifying to you, brothers and your sisters out there. If you found the video edifying, please uh, put a comment in the comment section and uh, let me know if you were edified by this video. So this is the book of Matthew 28 and 19. It says, Go ye therefore, now these words are written in red, right? So these words, these words were actually spoken by Yahweh Shai. This is Matthew 28 and 18. And Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, right? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, why are we supposed to teach all nations? Because the nation of Israel is scattered among all nations. Plus, we're supposed to teach the nations their judgment for what they did to the nation of Israel, especially the nation of Edom, the Edomites. So it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. Now here comes the Israelites that were scattered among the other nations because they're the only ones that can get baptized to this knowledge, to this truth, right? baptizing them, because this word is only for the Israelites, beginning with the elect, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's why when we give our greeting, we say all praises to Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rakakwadash, which is ancient Hebrew for the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what Yahweh Shai told us to do. Let's read it again. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So keep in mind the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit. And what do I always say about the Holy Spirit? It's the engine of this ministry of ours, right? I always say that. So now, here's the next verse. And here's the key point which prompted me to do this video. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, right? teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. 
And lo, meaning look, I am with you always. So in every way within this ministry, Yahweh Shai is with us, right? The spirit of Yahweh Shai is with us because he went back to the Father. He's sitting at the right-hand side of the Father, even as I speak, right? It says, and lo, I am with you. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, and he wouldn't lie. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen, which means so let it be, right? So what period are we in right now? We're in the end of the world. What world? Esau's world. The end, and I believe the word there for world would be, um, it could be aeon, I never looked it up, or it could be cosmos, okay? Because, well, no, check this out, aeon, which means age, age, right? Is the Greek word for for world, okay? Strong's G165, I own, I own. Okay, I own, forever an unbroken age, per, per, uh, per, uh, per perpetuity, I hope I said this word right, perpetuity of time, perpetuity, oh, okay, perpetuity, I know I heard the word before, but I, I wasn't sure how to pronounce it, perpetuity of time, eternity, the world's universe. Period of time, here's the definition there. This is the one that fits. Period of time, age. So the end of what age? The end of Esau's age, which is what we're in now. Okay? We're in the end of Esau's age now. Okay? Uh, uh, proof of that is um, when you go in the book of Obadiah, okay, there was one thing Esau would do that would... Uh, show the end of his age right and the end of his age began when the heavenly father started taking them down as a people if we go in the book of obadiah obadiah the first chapter all right something he would do and this man is immensely proud right uh let's start at the third verse obadiah one and three the pride of thine heart have deceived thee this is this is uh directed to the edomites all right, the Edomites, which begins with the top banking families of the so-called white man. They're the Edomites. As a matter of fact, the Rothschilds know for a fact that their line goes back to Esau. Esau is Edom. All right, Genesis 36 and 8, right? The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. That's where you get the term Caucasian, which means cave dweller. Okay, the clefts of the rock. They're always ca uh, climbing rocks, you know. It's just in their spirit. It's just in their nature. We don't go climbing rocks, but they do because that's the, that's the nature the Heavenly Father put within them, right? Whose habitation is high. Look at their buildings. You, you got something called skyscrapers. There you go. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? That's an example, an, an example of his pride, right? Now, here's the point. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, as a super clue, what's, what's the uh, symbol of this so-called white man's uh, kingdom? The eagle. What's the symbol of America? The bald eagle. Okay? So it says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, the Romans had the eagle as their symbol. And so did the Greeks. Okay? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. What does that mean? When they got into space travel, okay? When they started putting up their satellites up there, their space stations, you know, all the stuff that they got there in outer space, that's when they started setting up their nests among the stars. They even have weapons out there in outer space. You had, you had the presidents like... Um, What's his name? Ronald Reagan engaged in something called, um, what was that? Uh, as a matter of fact, um, not too long ago, Donald John Trump, DJ Trump, called for a sixth military branch in outer space. Okay, and Ronald Reagan, I remember that for a fact, because I remember when Ronald Reagan was in office, uh, they, they, he had discussions, he and his cabinet, they had discussions about uh, setting up weapons in outer space, 
Okay, he even made a statement, uh, will we not all come together? What if there was some outside force? Let me see if I can find uh, the speech that he made or an excerpt of the speech that he made. Ronald Reagan's, Ronald Reagan's, uh, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's, the, that's the spirit, man. Maybe I typed that before. Ronald Reagan's statement to join forces to fight aliens. And the aliens uh, that they're talking about is they know that's Yahweh Shai and the angels. They know. They know it's not little green men from Mars. That's what the majority of the populace thinks. But the top wicked elite, they, they understand that those so-called aliens is Yahweh Shai and the angels. And indeed, they would be aliens to this world. Because another word for alien means a foreigner. They would be foreign to this world. Because they're coming from the spirit world. Yahweh Shai and the angels. Those are spirits, right? Coming from the spirit world, visit, visiting this world, which is the physical world, okay? And, and Yahweh Shai is coming for two reasons. He's coming with the angels to deliver his elect, as first and foremost, Matthew 24 and 30, and to destroy this place called America and Israel. America and Israel is going to be going to both be totally destroyed. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. So those are the two main reasons why Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming to visit this realm. Okay, so here we have a uh, we have an article here from NBC News flashback at UN Reagan wish for alien invasion to unite people on Earth. And that's when they, they started talking about uh, putting weapons into outer space to defend themselves from said aliens. Okay, uh, address to 42nd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, New York, September 21st, 1987. Uh, hmm, September 21st, do you know that's a, a satanic day? Uh, check this out, is September 21st a satanic day? Is that very interesting that it began on that day? Is September when you go on the uh, the uh, Wicca calendar, the witch's calendar? September twenty first is a is a is a um, demonic day for the for the uh, wicked elite. Okay, is September twenty first. Uh, satanic day because they they have just like in uh, righteousness you have certain days it tells you that in the apocrypha certain days are more hallowed than others like case in point like the sabbath the sabbath is, is more hallowed than the rest of the days right as it is written remember the sabbath to keep it holy right uh, it's the same thing on the left hand side same thing on the wicked side. You have certain days that are more hallowed, so to speak, in wickedness than the other days. And it tells you that in the Apocrypha. Okay? Uh, is September 21st a satanic day? Let's see what comes up. Let's see what comes up. Let's see what comes up. See? Pagan, Wicca, Holy day's calendar okay now this might have the information i'm looking for okay so there you go uh on the left hand side there's your so-called holy days for uh wiccans which another word for wiccan is witches this is on the left hand side these, these are the most satanic days, so to speak. And you're going to see. There you go. You see that? September 21st. Okay? September 21st. Uh, it's no, also known as Maban Fall Equinox. Uh, fall Equinox to uh, Pagan... Wiccan, Maban celebrated at the fall equinox 
marks the transition to approaching darkness of the coming winter months. Marban celebrations, there you see the five, the demonic five-point star, you see that there. Marban celebrations involve giving thanks for the harvest, making offerings of fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? That's what Cain did. <laughs> he offered fruits and vegetables. And this, this is proof that they're, they're of the sons and daughters of Cain, man, offering fruits and vegetables. And performing cer ceremonies, well, I guess there's, the, on the right 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 hand side, I guess there's a, uh, the first fruits, offering of the first fruits. So I guess I stand corrected. But it kind of reminds me of Cain, when Cain was supposed to sacrifice uh, meat. He was supposed to make a meat offering. He, he offered up fruits and vegetables. And uh, Abel offered up, offered up a meat offering. And the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, had, had respect to Abel's offering rather than Cain's. All right, the scriptures tell us that. So that's what came to my mind first, you know. Um, and vegetables performing ceremonies to honor the equinox, which equinox literally means equal night. That's when it's 12 hours uh, of the day and 12 hours of the night, equinox. Uh, to honor the equinox, change from the light half of the year to the dark so the, the, these are um you, you know they would have dark celebrations right decorations made of corn squash vines and pumpkins are common all right so that's september 21st so now let's go back to um let me see if i can find that uh information so it's it's kind of now you see when they had that session so it's it's, it's kind of interesting that they had that session on september 21st 1987 september 21st is the beginning of the festival the festival the wiccan festival of marban i just read it to you so now let's click on that let's see what okay let's see what uh what we can glean from this information here. I just want to get to the part where Reagan talks about uh, where Reagan talks about having a force in outer space and then get back to the pre uh, to the uh, to the scripture in Obadiah. Okay. I believe that's his speech, right? Let me see here, Justin. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's him. That's Reagan speaking. I want to get to the part where he where he speaks about where he speaks about uh, outer space. So bear with me for a minute. Uh, this is my vision, America's vision. I recognize that some governments represent blah, 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 blah. Bear with me for a minute. United States is gratified by blah, 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 blah. Wow, it's a long speech. Hope I didn't pass it. I don't think I did. He's talking about Nicaragua. And remember, he gave the speech on September 21st, 1987. Oh, is this it? Hold up. Strat right. That's what it was called. Strategic Defense Initiative. Okay. Um, strategic Defense Initiative. We'll make sure that we continue to da, 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 look forward to. Uh, must have been. Budget reforms, blah, 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 blah. 
My goodness, man. It's a long ass speech. Okay, well, yeah. didn't even mention anything about the, uh, about the um, addressing about outer space. Let's do this. Let's type in, let's type in, um, the pause call. Okay. All right. So, hmm. All right, let's click on this Smithsonian Magazine. Reagan and Gorbachev, old Stainhead. <laughs> That's what he was called back in the day. Gorby. Reagan and Gorbachev agreed to pause the Cold War in case of an alien invasion. There's these two devils sitting there. Now, I got to find the year on this. Uh, at one point... During the 1985 Geneva summit, President Ronald Reagan and Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev took a break from negotiations to take a walk. Only their private interpreters were present, and for years, the, the details of what they talked about were kept secret from both the Russian and American public. Mm. But during a 2009 interview with Charlie Rose and Reagan's Secretary of State George Schultz, Gorbachev revealed that Reagan asked him point blank if they could set aside their differences in case the world was invaded by aliens. And he, he had given previous speeches before uh, that summit in 1985. That was heavy on his mind. All right. So he wanted a military presence in outer space. And the main reason is because they know, these devils know that Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming to, to uh, uh, take down their, their kingdom. Yeah, that's what it was called. It was called the Star Wars Talks. That's what it was called, the Star Wars Talks. As far as we know, aliens... Forgive me, because this, you know, I haven't gone over this stuff in a while. So every now and then you got to go over this stuff to keep it sharp. It was called the Star Wars Talks. That's what it was called. I remember when, when they had that on the news, back when Reagan was in office. As far as we know, aliens never tried to take over the planet during the 1980s. And they, and they know goddamn well it's not no aliens, as in the sense of little green men from Mars. All right. The aliens they're talking about is Yahweh Shai and the angels. Uh, so Reagan and Gorbachev's informal agreement wasn't put to the test. Uh, case in point, they know and the wicked elite have known that these so-called UFOs are really the chariots of the Lord. And they know that one day that they will be invaded by these so-called UFOs and the chariots of the Lord. As a matter of fact, they're familiar with the scripture in Acts, the first chapter. Remember, the scripture said about Esau, Esau is no dummy, man. Don't sleep on Esau. Esau is not a dummy. The scripture says he's wiser than Daniel. So there's a lot of things that Esau knows. Now, he knows that Yahweh Shai left in a so-called UFO, a chariot. As a matter of fact, um, Elder Pastor always brings this point out about the movie um, The Life of Brian by Monty Python. Now, there's a scene in there, and I've done a video on that. So those of you that have watched my videos, you you know what I'm referring to. There's a scene where, um, uh, to make a long story short, the character who plays Brian, which is supposed to mirror uh, the life of Yahweh Shai, uh, he had the Romans chasing him, and he runs up into this tower, and right at, right about when he's, you know, he's about to jump off the tower, um, a, a, a spaceship comes from, and this is during the um, during uh, uh, when you watch the scene is during uh, so-called biblical times during the time of our Lord when our Lord walked the earth you know they were wearing the, the, the garments and all of that alright so to see a, a, a spaceship come from outer space was, was you know was hilarious but that's ex exactly how that's exactly how Yahweh Shai went back to the heavens in the spaceship so in that scene as the, the character who plays Brian, as he jumps off the tower, 
a spaceship comes out of nowhere, right, and rescues him, right, in, inadvertently rescues him when you watch the scene, that which made it even more funny, right, and within the ship, they had these alien-looking creatures, okay, that's the spin that Esau puts on it, they know it's not alien-looking creatures, they know that, um, that that's the Hawasha and the angels, okay, in other words, they know that that's the angels, and they don't look like, like uh, alien-looking creatures. All right. Matter of fact, in the book Above Top Secret UFO, um, it was written by a retired colonel of the Air Force. I forgot the guy's name. If anybody finds the name, they can put it in the comment section. Uh, he made a statement. He said, because he, being an Air Force colonel, he he flew up in the sky. He's flew. He's, he flew in the skies many times, right? And, um, and uh, he said he saw uh, that ship and it reminded him, or so-called UFO that is, it reminded him of what was written in Ezekiel, the uh, first chapter, okay? Ezekiel, the first chapter, when Ezekiel himself, the prophet Ezekiel, was visited by those angels, in the so-called UFOs. It's clearly written in Ezekiel, the first chapter. So the point I'm trying to make to you is the wicked elite of Esau know that it's not little green men from Mars. They know it's Yahweh and the angels. That's the point. They know how Yahweh left the planet Earth pursuant to Acts, the first chapter, the ninth verse. They know how he's coming back. So they're trying to prepare themselves for when he comes back to try to defeat him. And that's found in, uh, in, the, in the Apocrypha, the book of 2nd Esdras, um, what is that? The 13th chapter. Okay? You can read about that in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. So it was called the Star Wars Talks. Let's read a little more of that. So Reagan and Gorbachev's informal agreement wasn't put to the test. But perhaps unsurprisingly for a president whose nuclear deterrent plan was nicknamed Star Wars. Reagan was a big sci science fiction fan. He had grown up reading Edgar Rice Burroughs' epic science fiction novels. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, so what's the point? The point is, when we go back to the scripture, the prophecy says this. When they started putting their military payload in outer space and started doing all that stuff in outer space, that's when the Lord said he's going to bring them down. All right? So, Obadiah 1 and 4. Do thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and do thou set thy nest among the stars. That's the space travel. And all the stuff he was doing out there in outer space that, he, and that he's been doing, right? It, and this began in the late 60s, going into 1970. That's when Esau was, was hot into the space program. Okay, you, you had the, uh, uh, you had that, um, which that was all dramatized. That wasn't you know they didn't go to the moon that was that was nothing but uh, that was shot on a uh, uh, a sound stage so to speak stanley Krub stanley kubrick as a matter of fact built the sets for that so-called moon landing nonsense all right and that's why stanley kubrick right after that he he he, he always he used to carry a shotgun because um you know they were afraid he would talk you know stanley kubrick all right so anyway um but it didn't deter Esau from getting into space travel, okay, going into uh, outer space. And uh, case in point, you have these satellites that, I, that Esau put there that are in outer space, 150, 100, 100, 150 miles above the earth, okay? So this ties in with the prophecy here. It says, Do thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and do thou set thy nest among the stars, space travel, Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So that began the end of his age, like we read over here. That began the end of Esau's age. So here, Yahweh Shai says, And lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world, the end of the age. When did that begin? When did the end of Esau's age begin? When Esau started going into space. When Esau started putting up his military payload in space out of space to so-called defeat the aliens. I read to you about Gorbachev and Reagan's conversation. 
And recently, Donald Trump said the same thing. He called for six military branching out of space. So they're trying to prepare themselves to defend themselves when Yahweh Shai and the angels come, right? So that began the end of their age. So the key point here is Yahweh Shai said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So if Yahweh Shai is with us, right, in spirit, right, he's certainly not with us in flesh because he's in the, in the spirit world with his father, right? Sits at the right hand side of his father, right? So if he's with us in spirit, how the hell are we not going to know his name, his true name? And certainly, if we know his true name, we're going to know the name of the Father. Furthermore, all this information that we received, right, beginning with the name of the Father and the Son, was revealed to us by the Spirit. Because that's what the Scripture says. When you go in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, everything that we've learned of these, this, these Scriptures, right, especially the dark sayings, the parables, the allegories, we learned that through the Spirit through our elders, okay? Let me read that to you. This is 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, beginning at the seventh verse. But we speak the wisdom of the Heavenly Father in the mystery. See that? Even the hidden wisdom, the hidden wisdom, <laughs> which we got through the what? Through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Remember I told you about the Holy Spirit being an engine of this thing of ours? So we're getting all this information through the Holy Spirit. So among the things we got through the Holy Spirit, beginning with our elders, we got the true name of the Father and the Son. And it takes faith to believe that. A lot of guys have denounced the faith. So when you say that we don't have the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, you have denounced the faith. You have, you, you, you're what is called an infidel because you have denounced the faith. And if Bishop Nathaniel continues with that nonsense, he will utterly be destroyed. There's no doubt about it, okay? Because we have the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. And for us to praise the Heavenly Father and the Son, we have to have those true names. There's no other way. We have to have those true names so we can call upon those names, so we can call upon those names, so we can teach in those names, so we can make those names public, all right? Reading on, it says, But we speak the wisdom of the Heavenly Father and the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which the Heavenly Father, listen good, which the Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, which the Heavenly Father ordained before the world unto our glory. So part of our glory is knowing the true name of the Heavenly Father and his son. That's part of our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. See that? For had they, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear, or, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Heavenly Father have prepared for them that love him. Right. Reading on. But, here's the point. But the Heavenly Father have revealed them, meaning the mysteries, uh, the parables, the true understanding of the scriptures, the, the dark sayings, Right. He has revealed them unto us by his spirit. And that includes his name and his son's name. We got that through the spirit given to our elders, which gave it to us. Beginning with Elder Apostle on down. We got that through the spirit, man. And remember, the key point is this. The key point is I showed you the beginning, the, or the, rather the, the beginning of the ending of Esau's age, when that would come about. That was going into the late 60s, early 70s with that space travel nonsense, right? The, Yahweh Shai said he would be with us even unto the end of Esau's age. So the point I'm making is if he's with us in spirit, there's no way we wouldn't know his name and his, and, and his father's name. There's no way. And we believe that by faith. So that's a cut to Bishop Nathaniel saying that we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. Okay, that violates what Yahweh Shai said. Yahweh Shai said he would be with us even unto the end of this age, which we're, which we're in right now. And it began with uh, Esau's space travel, which I just showed you, right? So we have the true name of the Father and the Son, okay? And it was revealed to us through the Spirit to our elders. Let's read 1 Corinthians 2 again and 10. But the Most High have revealed them unto us by His Spirit. See that? The same, wait a minute, 
Yahweh Shah is with us here in spirit. He said, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. So he's with us here in spirit. So he's the one revealing, uh, Yahweh Shah and the angels, they're the ones revealing all this information that we have. All right? Revealing it, which, uh, uh, revealed it to our elders, which our elders revealed it to us. And some things were revealed to us by the spirit of Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai. Not even our elders, man. Some things was re revealed to us by the spirit of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Because our elders, they've been, uh, they've been dead for a while. Um, well, you know, King Marsha, Elder High Priest Arya. Not Elder High Priest Arya. I meant to say Elder High Priest Yaiquab. Okay? Those two men. All right? So some things we learned by the spirit of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai working with us in this ministry. All right? Like the correct way to keep the Sabbath, that was revealed to Elder Pastor by the Holy Spirit. Okay, the, the understanding of Cornelius, that was revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's the point. But the Heavenly Father have revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of the Heavenly Father, including the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. The Spirit, as it is written, the Spirit searcheth all things. So here's another point that we have the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son, which is the name of the Father is Yahweh, the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's read that in the NLT. But it was to us that the Heavenly Father revealed these things by His Spirit. See that? For His Spirit searches, which we have His Spirit within us. Those of us that have been called to this knowledge, to this truth, we've been given the, the Spirit of Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai, man. The, the spirit of Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai is within us. Yahweh Shai said, I'm with you even to the end of the age. So his spirit is with us, giving us much understanding. Okay? So it says, but it was to us that the Heavenly Father revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches, searches out everything and shows us the Heavenly Father's deep secrets. Look at that. It said searches it said, searches out everything, including the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, which we already have. Okay? So I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. If you was, drop a line in the comment section. And it's on to the next one.